In today's video, we're going to talk about conditional statements. Within that, we're going to write, identify, and analyze truth values of conditional statements. And we're also going to use conditional statements to write inverse, converse, and contrapositive statements. So all those things probably don't make sense right now, but as we go, um, you will get those definitions and make sure you write those in the vocab sheet that I'm going to give you. Um, so starting with what is a conditional statement, it's a statement that can be written in if-then form. So we see that um, parts, of our state, parts of our statements are going to be written with letters, just like when we use variables to represent numbers. These P's and Q's are going to re represent parts of our statements. So if P, the letter P, will always stand for our hypothesis. Um, so in a, a conditional, the hypothesis is the what comes there after the word if, and Q will represent our conclusion, which is the whatever comes after the word then. Uh, if we wrote that in a Venn diagram, we would say if P, which depends on then Q in R. So the inside, the little one, will be it, the hypothesis. The big one will be the conclusion. Um, by phrasing a conjecture as an if-then statement, you can quickly identify its hypothesis and conclusion. So last time we talked about a, con a conjecture, which was somewhat like an educated guess. In if-then form, it's easy to pick out the hypothesis and conclusion. So let's try a couple examples of that. So in these statements, we're going to identify what's the hypothesis and what's the conclusion. So if today mm -hmm. is Thanksgiving Day, then today is Thursday. So what follows the if would be our hypothesis. So our hypothesis will be today is Thanksgiving Day. And what follows the then is our conclusion. So today is Thursday. So if I hear that today is Thanksgiving Day, my conclusion is then it must be Thursday. A number is a rational number if it is an integer. So what comes after the word if will be our hypothesis. It is an integer. So we change that even though this, the sentence said it. We always want our hypothesis to have our um, subject in it. So a number is an integer. And then the other part, the conclusion, will be that the number is a rational number. So if it's an integer, my conclusion is that it must be also a rational number. Okay, here's one more. Um, a number is divisible by 3 if it is divisible by 6. So if I look for the hypothesis, what came after the if? Well, here's the if in the statement. So my hypothesis is that the number is divisible by 6. If a number is divisible by 6, my conclusion will be that it is also divisible by 3. Like I said earlier, we use P to represent our hypothesis and Q to represent our conclusion. There's a couple different ways you might hear if-then statements. If P, then Q. It could also be if P, Q, or Q if P. P implies Q, or P only if Q. So most of the time you'll hear if P, then Q. So many sentences without the words if and then we can write as conditional. So now we're going to take some statements and see if we can identify the hypothesis and conclusion so that we can write it in if then form. So if we want to write a conditional statement from the following, an obtuse triangle it has exactly one obtuse angle. To identify the hypothesis and conclusion, we want to think what is um, I, what is conditional on the other. So. I have to have an obtuse triangle to be able to say that it has exactly one obtuse angle. So the hypothesis will be an obtuse triangle. Um, the conclusion will be has an has exactly one obtuse angle. Most of the time, whatever comes first will be the hypothesis, but not always. So in an if-then statement, we would say if a triangle is obtuse, then it is exactly has exactly one obtuse angle. Now we can also look at these in our Venn diagrams. So kind of like we did in the beginning, the hypothesis will always be the smaller and the, the bigger or the outer oval will always be our conclusion. So if I wanted to write this as an if-then statement, I would say if an animal is a blue jay, then my conclusion is that it must be a bird. If an animal is a blue jay, then it is a bird. Okay, we're going to try another one. <clears throat> if I give you the statement, two angles that are complementary are acute. So first we want to identify what the hypothesis and the conclusion are. Two angles that are complementary are acute. So the two angles complementary is our hypothesis, and they are acute 
is their conclusion. So we would, as an if-then statement, if two angles are complementary, then they are acute. Now we're going to look at some of these conditional statements, and they have what are called truth values. Either if it's a true statement, it has a truth value of true. If it's false, it has a false truth value. To have a conditional statement that is false, the hypothesis must be true and the conclusion must be false. So if the hypothesis is false, um, it's still a truth, or a truth value of true. So to show that a conditional statement is false, you need to find one counterexample where the hypothesis is true. So the first part is still true, but the conclusion is not. So here we'll look at a couple of these. Determine if the conditional is true. If it's false, give a counterexample. So this is similar to what we did um, last unit or last lesson, uh, where we found counterexamples to things. Now we're just being more specific that we are looking at conditional statements. If this month is August, then the next month is September. So, when the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is also true because September always follows August. So the conditional is a true, has a true truth value. Here's another one. If two angles are acute, then they are congruent. So, um, if we do have two angles that are acute, can we come up with a, a time where they are not congruent? Well, yes, we can have two angles that are acute, so true hypothesis, but them not be congruent. So like 80 and 30, those are both acute, but they are not the same. They are not congruent. So in this case, the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. Um, so we found a counterexample, so the conditional has a false truth value. Okay, now let's look at another one. We're going to decide if it's true. It's a, if it's false, we're going to give a counterexample. So, if an even number greater than 2 is prime, then 5 plus 4 equals 8. So, if we start by looking at the hypothesis, an even number greater than 2 is prime, well, that hypothesis is false. Any number, any even number greater than 2, so like 4 or 6 or 8, can't be prime because 2 is a factor of it, just because it's even. So, since the hypothesis is true, it doesn't matter that 5 plus 4 does not equal 8. It doesn't matter that the conclusion is false. Since the hypothesis was false, the conditional is true. Just because the hypothesis is false. We don't even need to look at the conclusion. Alright, let's try the next one. We're going to decide if this statement is true. If a number is odd, then it is divisible by 3. So if we think of an odd number, can we have it not be divisible by 3? Yes, we can. If I pick 7, it is not divisible by 3. So I did pick something where the hypothesis was true. I picked a number that was odd, but the conclusion is, is false. It's not divisible by 3. So we found a counterexample, the number 7, so our conditional is false. So what we notice from those last, last two, remember, if the hypothesis is false, the conditional statement is true. Doesn't matter what the conclusion is, the hypothesis is false, we can we say that the whole conditional statement is technically true. Okay, so now uh, we're going to look at what if I put the word not. We're going to talk about what it means to take the negation of a statement. The negation of a statement, or not P, uh, the not is represented by a squiggly line. The negation of a statement of a true statement is false and the negation of a false statement is true. So the negation just flips the truth value. So if I look at a conditional statement, a conditional statement written uh, will always say if P then Q. So in symbols we'll write P with an arrow and a Q. Hypothesis then conclusion. So now we're going to use that to create some other types of statements. Uh, we will want to make sure we write these down so you can use them later. The first one we're going to look at is called the converse. If I want to create the converse of a statement, I'm going to flip the hypothesis and the conclusion. So instead of if hypothesis, then conclusion, it's like we're saying if conclusion, then hypothesis. So instead of if P, then Q, we're going to say if Q, then P. The next one we're going to work on is called the inverse. I leave that in order, but I negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So instead of if P, then Q, we're going to say if not P, then not Q. So I would add the word not in both my hypothesis and conclusion. 
The last type of statement we can create is called the contrapositive. The contrapositive does both things. We flip the hypothesis and conclusion and we also negate both of them. So if not P, then not Q. They're flipped and negated. Okay, now we're going to take a conditional statement and we're going to practice writing the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Then we're going to use uh, what we're told here to decide the truth value of each. So our conditional statement, if an animal is an adult insect, then it has six legs. This is what we'll use as our science fact. This is what we're going to use as truth because science proved it. Adult insects have six legs. No other animals have six legs. All right, so now let's go back to our statement. If an animal is an adult insect, then it has six legs. So in blue, we have our hypothesis. In red, we have our conclusion. So if I wanted to write the converse, my notes say if Q then P means I'm going to flip those. And I'm going to put if my conclusion, then my hypothesis. So if an animal has six legs, then it is an adult insect. Notice we just switched those. You can tell with the color. So since our science fact said that no other animals have six legs, the converse is also true. If an animal has six legs, then it must be an adult insect. Couldn't be anything else. Okay, now let's try and write the inverse. So we're going to leave those, we're going to go back to our original. Always go back to the original. We're going to leave those in order, but inverse says to negate both of them. So to put the word not. So if an animal is not an adult insect, then it does not have six legs. So no other animal has six legs, so this is true. If it's not an adult insect, it can't have six legs. Next one we're going to do, the contrapositive. If I go back to the original, we said the contrapositive, we're going to flip the hypothesis and conclusion, and we're going to put the word not in both of them. So, if an animal does not have six legs, then it is not an adult insect. So, since adult insects must have six legs, uh, then the con contrapositive is true. Um, we're going to try one more. Uh, we're going to take another statement. This time it's going to be, if an animal is a cat, then it has four paws. I think this truth value will be easier for us to understand. Um, if an animal is a cat, then it has four paws. To write the converse, remember we said we were going to flip the hypothesis and conclusion. These rules you're kind of just going to have to memorize. Converse means to flip the two. So, I'm going to say, if an animal has four paws, then it is a cat. So I flipped my hypothesis and my conclusion. So if an animal has four paws, does it have to be a cat? Well, I can think of some counterexamples. I can think of animals that have four paws. There are not cats. A dog, a cow, a bear. Okay, any animal has four paws, but it's not a cat. So that is false. Now we go back to the original. To write our inverse, we leave it in that order but we negate them both. So, if an animal is not a cat, then it does not have four paws. So, if it is not a cat, does that mean that it has, does not have four paws? Well, no, it doesn't. There are other cat animals that are not cats and have four paws. Same co uh, counterexamples as our converse. So now, for our contrapositive, we're going to go back to the original. We're going to flip it, and we're going to negate it. So we're going to say, if an animal does not have four paws, then it is not a cat. Cats have four paws, so the contrapositive is true. All right, the last thing we want to mention is very important. Related conditionals have the same truth value and are called logically equivalent statements. So by logically equivalent means they have the same truth value, so a conditional and its contrapositive are logically equivalent, meaning if a conditional is true, then you know the contrapositive is true. If the conditional is false, you know the contrapositive is false. That's helpful because contrapositives are hard to decide on. Likewise, converse and inverse are logically equivalent. 
This was kind of a long video, but some really tough stuff, so I would suggest watching it again if necessary. We'll see you in soon.